known by any everyone who calls themselves a Christian, but it's rarely prayed. You know, sometimes you can know something so much until it becomes a cliche and you don't even know how to deal with it. So when God said we should pray about it, I didn't even know how to go about it. I said, but Lord, this is too simple and too common. I don't even know. How. And he says, pray, pray. Guess what that scripture is? So common that even children know it's... <laughs> That's a good try. Let's go to Psalms 23. For the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah, Psalms 23. And the Lord says we should pray Psalms 23. As simple as it is, so profound is that mm. scripture. And yes, still we barely or seldom pray it into our very lives. It's my prayer that during this fasting and prayer, as you pray, this scripture into your life the lord will manifest himself through his word amen. in your life amen. Amen. amen so let's start reading and praying psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd the lord is my shepherd today i'll read our excuse you today okay. it says the lord is my shepherd Connecting us to a relationship that we have with God. The Lord is what? My, my shepherd. shepherd. And God was saying that many times we find ourselves in situations and in certain problems which we are unable to come out because we don't recognize him enough as our shepherd. If you make God your shepherd, it means you are totally, completely, wholeheartedly dependent on God. The Lord is my shepherd. A lion doesn't need a shepherd. A tiger doesn't need a shepherd. An elephant... And all the wild beasts, they don't need shepherds. Why? Because they are very independent. Very independent. They can go out and take care of themselves and survive. And so when they, are, they find themselves in issues, they have to resolve it themselves. But not with the sheep. The sheep must be tended, catered for watch over provided for by the shepherd and god says we are to see him as our great shepherd to watch over our lives our soul our body our spirit and everything that we do there are certain situations when you are going through you need to let god know that father you are my shepherd you are supposed to be taking care of me in this situation so that I don't make a mistake, a, a blunder. I don't do things on my own. And then you can also face a situation and then even though you know God is your shepherd, you decide to rebel against his guidance and his leading like a goat. Sheep submit to the shepherd. Goats are rebellious goats are always wanting to have their own or do their own things and therefore sometimes when we don't allow god to shepherd us concerning certain things in our lives we find ourselves becoming victims of circumstances why because i didn't rely and depend on god enough my confidence, my trust wasn't in him. I did my own thing. I made my own decision. I made my own choice. I handled this situation my own way and did not recognize Jehovah God as my shepherd. And you can be faced with a problem, faced with a situation, a crisis, 
a challenge. And if you don't recognize God as your shepherd, you will stress, you will worry, you will be anxious, you will be panicking, you will make blunders, mistakes as you try to resolve them your own. And sometimes that's where we find ourselves worrying, stressing, panicking, and being unhappy because we have forgotten that we are sheep and he is our great shepherd. Today, I submit to you, whatever situation that you find yourself, let God know that, Lord, even though I'm faced with this giant, faced with this red sea, faced with this storm, faced with these challenges, health issue, bad report, challenges, attacks, this person coming after me, my husband not treating me well, things not going the way I'm expecting it, but, Lord, I refuse to do anything anything because i'm totally dependent on you as my shepherd i will not take any actions until you shepherd me until you guide me until you counsel me until you advise me until you instruct me for i recognize that you are my shepherd oh it's a place of total dependency the devil will provoke you, incite you, induce you to step out of the jurisdiction and the covering of God for you to do your own things. And many times, because of pressure, because of the weight of our issues, we just wake up and we do things. Then later on, we realize, oh, God is my shepherd. Did I even pray? If God is your shepherd, have you been praying to him? If God is your shepherd, have you sought his counsel? If God is your shepherd, what will God have you do in this situation? Or are you handling this issue, this problem, this burden your own way? And that's why many of us are unhappy, stressing, and, and, and having so much anxiety because we haven't made Jesus, our shepherd. We say it, but we are not walking it. It is one thing to say. I recognize somebody can say, oh, I'm married to my husband. I'm, ha I'm married. I'm, I'm, I'm married. Some people are going ahead saying, I'm married, all right. But you get into their homes and there's no relationship going on. We, we say it, but we are not walking in that relationship with Jesus Christ by constantly, continuously, every time depending on him to shepherd us. Concerning our decision making, our choice making, the problem you are going, going on at your workplace, have you allowed God to shepherd you to show you what to do? The issues you are finding or going through in your marriage, have you sought the counsel of Jesus to shepherd you as to how to handle it? The attacks you are going through in your life, are you consulting God's divine counsel concerning it? Or have you taken matters into your own hands? The Lord is my shepherd. A relationship of total dependency on God. And when we depend and we rely on God, the shepherd takes care of the sheep. Why should you worry? Why should you stress? Why should you be anxious? Why should you be troubled when you have Jehovah God himself being your shepherd? I want somebody to pray that because of the situations and the crisis and the challenges that you are going through, you know that you have derailed from his presence and you know that because of the urgency of your problem, you did not seek his counsel and you are not as connected as you should. And you, are, you know very well that the shepherd is not the central focus, the epicenter of your life that is guiding you through this issue. And if you don't let God become your shepherd, you may get things wrong. Yes, he loves you, but you'll be finding yourself making wrong choices, wrong decisions and falling into the devil's trap because you are not acknowledging him. I want somebody to pray and say, Lord, I'm a, I am acknowledging you right now as my shepherd. Father, shepherd me during this situation. Shepherd me 
as to how to deal with this stubborn person. Shepherd me as to how to deal with my husband. Shepherd me as to how to deal with my supervisor. Shepherd me as to how to deal with my son, my daughter, who is going astray. Shepherd me, oh God, as to how to go about this problem, this challenges, this issue that is going on right now in my life. Lord, I need you to shepherd me. I'm tired, sick and tired of doing things my own way. I'm sick and tired of listening to the counsels of men who is not helping me. Lord, I recognize you this very minute, right now. Shepherd of my soul, my Savior Jesus, shepherd me through this. Shepherd me through this. I want you to mean what you are praying and ask God for a specific thing that you are going through and you know that you haven't come to total, complete, wholeheartedly, depending, relying, and allowing God to have his way, his will in your life. And you find yourself fighting God's will. You find yourself wrestling with God's perfect will. Why? Because something within you want to have its own way. But you know that if you go your own way, you will go astray. You will miss the mark. You will miss the best of God for your life. And therefore, you want to submit to God right now as the word of God is hitting you, as the Lord is speaking to your heart. Are you trusting me? Are you allowing my counsel to lead you? Or are you listening to friends or family members or are you listening to the dictate of what others are saying or would you allow me will you allow my spirit my word to counsel you or will you keep on listening to the voice of men the opinions of men oh lord jesus shepherd me begin to pray father in the name of jesus christ i recognize right now that you are my shepherd you are my shepherd you are my shepherd. Lord, I need you to shepherd me now. I come into your presence right now in prayer, submitting my will unto your will. Father, I submit my will to your will. Not my will, O oh God, but let your will be done. Let your will be done concerning my health. Let your will be done concerning my son, daughter. Let your will be done concerning my marriage. Let your will be done concerning my job. Let your will be done. Father, in the name of Jesus, I seek your counsel, your guidance, your instruction, your help, your admonition, your guide. Father, counsel me. You are my shepherd. You are my shepherd. Shepherd me through this process. Shepherd me through this crisis. Shepherd me th through these storms. Shepherd me through these attacks. Shepherd me, O oh God. Ikatayada. Paloska tayada broska. Rapanini katonini nianta. Fariando zigedebo shanda. Lord, you are my shepherd. I recognize you right now. At my workplace, be my shepherd. In my marriage, be my shepherd. Concerning my life, oh Lord, shepherd me. I don't want to do my own things anymore. I don't want to fight my own battles anymore. I don't want to rely on my intelligence oh, anymore. The Bible says that trust in the Lord. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding. Lord, I am sick and tired of relying and depending and leaning on my own human understanding which keeps on failing me. I'm sick and tired of leaning on the understanding of friends and families which is failing me. But today, be my shepherd. I lean on your word. I need on your promises. I lean on your Holy Spirit. I lean on you, Jesus. Be the shepherd. Be my shepherd. Be the shepherd over my body. Be the shepherd over my soul. Be the shepherd over my spirit. Be the shepherd of every department of my life. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender my marriage. I surrender my finances. I surrender my job. I surrender my education. I surrender my career. I surrender a every area, every department, every place. Oh Lord, to you, you become my shepherd. I acknowledge you. I'm trusting you to be my shepherd. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for being my shepherd. And as you rely on God as your shepherd, he will guide you. He will lead you. So now he goes on to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> you can't let God be your shepherd and be in need or lack of want. I shall not want simply means a supplier. The Lord will supply. He has said in his word that his name is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, the great provider. His name is Jehovah El Shaddai, the double-breasted God who is able to sufficiently supply. He says that he is able to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. In Philippians 4 verse 19. So when we recognize God as our shepherd, one of the things he begins to do for you is to seek out your needs, your wants. Now, that it's, it's very interesting. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Meaning God takes care of your needs and then he begins to also take care of your wants. No wonder the Bible makes you and I to understand. I think in Psalms 37 verse 4 that, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you, he will grant you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in him. L recognize him as your shepherd. Do his bid and do his will and he will grant you the desires of your heart. Now he says the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say I shall not be in need. Meaning that the Lord has taken care of my need to the point of also taking care of my want. Want are things you can do without. Needs are necessities that you cannot do without. And God is able to take care of your needs. And after that, bless you with your wants. So now, David is not even praying about his needs because God has already taken care of his what? His needs. As a shepherd, a shepherd's responsibility is to take care of the flock. Is to take care of the sheep. Is to make sure that they are fed, they are full, they are satisfied, they are nourished, they are well taken care of. And God is a greater shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The question is, that have you come to that place whereby you've humbled yourself so much that you don't have to worry about your daily bread, how the bills are going to be paid, how your family is going to be taken care of because the Lord, he is my shepherd. And I know I shall not lack. I shall not lack. I shall not want. He will supply. God will supply. There's a place where you know Jehovah, Jireh, he will supply. I'm not afraid, even though I've lost the job, he will supply me with the job. I'm not afraid, though I've run out of money, he will supply. And even if he has to create a miracle money to come into my account, he will do that because he was able to send ravens to take care of Elijah. Bread and meat in the morning and afternoon. God is able to supply all my needs because he will supply everything. He gives me what? My want. As I told you, the lions, the cheetah, the tiger, and all other wild beasts are so dependent that they always have to go out and hunt for themselves. But for the sheep, they have to rely for the shepherd to go out there and take care of them and look for food for them. There's a place whereby God is always seeking out to take care of his children. He's always, have, has my daughter eaten? Is it well with his children? Is it well with his finances? Is it well with his health? The, it is the shepherd's responsibility to be thinking and worried about me. How come you are the one worried? The sheep is now worried for the shepherd. Because the sheep is disconnected. There's a place that you have to be so confident. You lost a job and you're afraid. No, my shepherd God will provide. He will provide me with a better job. My shepherd God will help me to get a new job. My shepherd God will pay the bills. My shepherd God will cancel my debt. My shepherd God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He is my supplier, provider. It is, there's a place whereby you know. You will not go empty. You will not go hungry. You know that your basic necessities and your wants will be ta taken care of. Why? Because God is my 
shepherd, and therefore I shall not want. Have you come to that place? Begin to pray. Father, I am your daughter. I am a sheep. I don't have to worry about my needs. And my want. And my want. You, oh Lord, you, oh Lord, as my shepherd, as my shepherd take, care take care of me. Concerning this job, take care of me. Concerning my bills, take care of the bills. So now, when they give you the bills, you don't have to worry anymore. You get the bills and say, Lord, this is the bills. However you are going to pay it this month, Lord, it's up to you. They have given me the bills. Lord, this is the bills. Pay it off. They give you a, 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 an eviction notice. That if you don't raise the money by the by this deadline, they will evict you, repossess your car, or you lose your house. You you just give it back to God. Father, listen to their threatenings. They said if you don't provide the money and you don't bring the money in by this time, they are evicting me. I am your sheep, you are the shepherd. God, see to it that you provide. You don't worry. You just let the sheep know, the shepherd know that this time has come to feed you, to take care of you. And see whether he will not miraculously, supernaturally take care of you. There's a place. If they give you, if they fire you, Lord, they fired me. They fired us. It is you and I. Now, how are we going to pay the bills? You are the shepherd. If they if they fired me or I've lost the job or lost the contract or I've come to the end of this contract, then Lord, it is your responsibility to look for a new contract for me, to get a new job, to get a new position. Because Lord, you are the shepherd, you are to take care of my needs and my wants. There's a place in faith whereby you just tell God and he worries as to how to take care of you, as to how to provide for you. And that's when God will go every length and breadth to touch the heart of people, to open doors for you, to make sure that his son or daughter is fed. Can you imagine every single day, God feeds the, the, the bears, he feeds even the ants, he feeds these minor animals, every one of them, God is able to take care of each one of them. How much more God will not take care of his sons and daughters who are redeemed by the precious blood of God. Child of God, start walking by faith. Lord, you are my shepherd. For that reason, I shall not be in want. Lord, take care of my needs and my want. It could be a financial want. It could be you need God to heal you. Yes, healing is part of supply. Lord, supply me with healing. Supply me with deliverance. Supply me with a job. Supply me with my citizenship. Supply me with your favor. Supply me with your goodness. Whatever you need, whatever you want from God, begin to open your mouth and say, my great shepherd, right now, supply, 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 supply me with this job. Supply me with this past. Supply me with this favor. Supply me with your goodness. Supply me with anything that you need. Ask him and the great shepherd shall supply it in the name of Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, our relationship with Jesus. I shall not want, I shall not want. The Lord will take care of my needs and the Lord will take care of my wants. Father, your word says that even the birds, they do not sow or reap, but yesterday they are what? The birds are taken care of. Even the flowers, they are well decorated. How much more would you not take care of us? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you become my great shepherd and provide, provide, provide for my family, provide for my children, provide for my wife, provide for my husband, provide for my family. In the name of Jesus, provide healing for the sick, provide jobs for the jobless, provide husbands for those who as single ladies, uh, provide wives for those men, uh, provide deliverance for those in bondage, uh, provide financial blessing for those who are going to financial challenge, uh, provide peace for those who are troubled, uh, provide healing for those who are sick. Uh, we ask you, O oh God, to supply all our needs, all our wants, according to your riches in Christ Jesus, for we recognize that you are our great shepherd, shepherd of my soul. Provide! Provide, provide your name is Jehovah Jireh. Provide me with this contract, provide me with this job, provide me with this position, provide me with this razor, provide me with this peace, provide me with this healing, provide me with this marriage restoration. Whatever I'm looking for, oh Lord, Kapari and Tadaba, every one of my problems, every one of my needs, every one of my prayer requests, you are able to provide. Lord, provide, Lord, provide. Great shepherd, shepherd over my soul, 
provide, provide, provide in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, I shall not want. I pray that after this prayer, whoever you are in need, in want of anything, may the great provider, may the great shepherd provide it for you. Amen. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all that we can even think or ask for. Child of God, let's begin to walk by faith. Amen. We serve a living God who is alive. God is indeed a shepherd and he takes care of his saints. He takes care of his own. But the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord is going through and through to strengthen those whose hearts are perfect, perfect towards him. God watches over his own. Are you not the child of God? Are you not redeemed by the blood of Jesus? Why can't God take care of you? Wake up, believe, and the Lord will provide all your wants and needs in Jesus' name. Verse 2. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2 says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Meaning God is able to give us a rest. We are in a time and a season in the world whereby there's too much stress. Too much stress. Too much stress in this world that we need God to give us rest. Rest. You go to work and there's stress. You come home and marriages are full of stress. Children are stressing their parents. Children are stressing their teachers. Uh, stress everywhere. Husbands are stressing their wives. Everywhere you turn, there is so much financial stress, job stress, economy stress, that we need to find rest in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he makes me to lie down in green pastures. God is able to give us rest. And I don't know who you are and the storms that are raging around you, but I submit to you that Jesus gives us rest from our stress. Too many people are going through so much. Spiritual problems, psychological problems, emotional problems, physical problems, financial problems. Everywhere you turn, people are on the edge. The little thing you do, you, you provoke somebody because people are going through too much. And the only one who can give us rest is the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus. And that's what God says, that pray this prayer. Pray the scriptures into your life that you may find rest. Rest in Jesus' name. Come to me, the, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are heavy burdened, and I shall give you rest. Tonight, there's somebody, you are being troubled at your workplace. You are being troubled in your marriage. You are being troubled because of a health issue. You are being troubled because of a son or a daughter. What they are going through in their, their work, their education. And the doctor, the teachers are calling you parent-teacher conversation about your son because they think your son is becoming too much problematic. Or you are going through some stressful situation where it's about court case. It's, you are stressing because you are not employed. You are stressing because you have no money to pay your bills. You are stressed because of spiritual stress and attack of witchcraft and spells attacking you some people are stressed because of their marriages and things that is going on in their lives but the lord jesus says that he leads us beside what still waters he's able to give us rest he makes me lie down in green pastures may the lord give you rest begin to pray that let oh shepherd of my soul oh shepherd of my soul lord jesus you are the shepherd of my soul Give me rest from my stress. Give me rest from my stress. Give me rest from all my stress. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray. Oh Lord, give me rest. Give me rest from every stressful situation. Give me rest from my stress. Rest from my stress. Rest from my stress. Repa palaba kantayada. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Give me rest for my stress. I pray for rest, 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 rest for my soul, rest for my body. Some of you, you, are, you have been working too hard. You are so tired. You are so fatigued. You are stressed up. You are worn out. And yes, so you have to drag yourself to keep on going. They have increased the demand at your workplace. Too much is going on in your life. You need some rest. Rest from tiredness. Rest from being exhausted. Rest from being tired. Oh, may the Lord give you rest. In the name of Jesus, receive rest through the power of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord refresh you and give you rest from every stressful situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord relieve you from every marital stress. May the Lord re re relieve you from every 
job related stress may the lord relieve you from every spiritual stress psychological stress emotional stress stress you are going through in your marriage with your children with your family with people around you whatever is stressing you may the lord give you rest in jesus name in jesus name the bible says he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me beside what he leads me in quiet waters he leads me beside quiet waters that is refreshment the refreshment lord refresh me lord refresh me lord refresh me lord refresh me he leads me beside was still still not troubled ah lord too much trouble too much trouble too much trouble at my workplace too much trouble in my marriage too much trouble at my in my neighborhood too much trouble is going on around me lord nourish me in the name of jesus lord refresh me lord refresh me lord refresh me sometimes our soul is so tired our soul is so Tense up, stressed up. Lord, refresh me. Lord, refresh me. Lord, refresh me. Let the joy of the Lord be my strength. Lord, refresh my soul. Lord, refresh my spirit. Lord, refresh my body. Lord, refresh me. You sleep and you wake up and you are still tired. You take vacation and you are still tired. You go to work and before you even go to work, you are already tired because of the stressful nature. Lord, restore. Lord, refresh me. Begin to pray. He leads me beside still waters. No more troubled waters. No more troubled restore refresh me lord refresh me lord in your presence i am in your presence right now lord refresh me refresh me refresh me oh god Rapapadi Katayadaba, Repapadi Katayadaba, Rekatarabayadaba, Repaskata Rabashata, Repashata Rabashata, Repashata, Repashata, refreshment in the presence of the Holy Ghost, in the presence of God, refreshment from the throne room of grace. May the Lord refresh your body, may the Lord refresh your soul, may the Lord refresh your spirit, may the Lord refresh you. Be refreshed right now, receive supernatural refreshment, receive supernatural refreshment. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Repacata rasco prende que resca, rescatore bascanta, maros que prende de bochata. Refreshment in the name of Jesus Christ. Rapadaba. And he says that he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He restores my soul, meaning he brings healing. Healing, 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 healing. The Lord restores your soul and he brings healing. He brings your soul life. He brings healing. May the Lord bring healing to your body, soul, and spirit. May the Lord release healing in your marriage. May the Lord release healing at your workplace, financial healing. May he heal your soul. May he heal your soul from every stressful situations anything that is troubling your soul may the lord release healing right now not only physical healing but emotional healing spiritual healing may your soul be healed in the presence of god begin to pray that father restore my soul and also heal my soul from every emotional pains and emotional distress and emotional troubles and emotional wounds lord heal me right now heal me and make me whole and as the lord heals your soul your body will be healed as the lord heals your soul everything around you will be healed so lord heal us even right now heal our souls let our soul escape as a bird out of the snares of the fowler let the snare that has captured our soul be broken lord bring healing to the broken hearted Bring healing to the wounded souls. Bring healing to those who are hurt and in pain, are going through disappointment and pain in one way or the other. Heal our soul. Heal my soul. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And then the Bible says that he guides me or he leads me in the path of righteousness. He leads me. Oh God, lead me. Lead me to make the right decisions. Lead me not to miss the mark. Lead me not to miss your will for my life. Sin means to miss the mark. He says he leads me in the path of righteousness. Meaning that from now after this prayer, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will lead me to do the right thing at the right time. To do the right things at the right time. To be at the right place at the right time. To meet the right people in the name of Jesus. No more will I be succumbing to sin. No more will I be indulging in sin. No more will I be 
making decisions and choices that will go contrary to the will of God. Lord, lead me. Oh, Lord, lead me in the path of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, I pray for divine guidance. Begin to pray that, Father, I pray for divine guidance. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to make any wrong turns. I don't want to make any wrong decision. I don't want to make any wrong choices. I don't want to miss your best for my life this season. In doing this 30 days fasting, I want your perfect will to be established in my life. I want to walk in your purpose, in your plan for my life. I pray for divine guidance. Lead me, O God, in the path of your righteousness. Not my will, O God. Not the will of my enemies. Let the, not the will of the devil. But Lord, lead me. Guide me in the path of righteousness. Help me to live a righteous life. Help me to live a holy life. Help me, O Lord, to live my life consecrated to you. Begin to pray. Lead me, O God. Lead me, O God. Guide me, O God, in the path of righteousness divine guidance divine guidance divine guidance the holy spirit will instruct you the holy spirit will lead you the holy spirit will guide you rapas kata kata rabasote paras kata yadaba refasu kabrande kete sigebrendo robosi antaraba shanda repa papa para paras kabanda kete bandori antari dikatori biataraba reba bashanta rebe shende bosakata rabashanda Zegerebo sata raba baba baba raba baba 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 reba de 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 raba baba 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 reba baba 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 suka raba baba baba thank you lord jesus in the name of jesus and it says he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake for his name's sake for his name's sake his name's sake means that the purpose of god for our lives his name's sake we don't live our life for ourselves we live our lives for his name. And that's why we are called Christians. Christ-like. Purpose. A life of purpose. Father, let your name seek. Let me fulfill your divine purpose. For your name's sake, let not me live my own will or the will of my enemies. But for your name's sake, let me fulfill your divine purpose for my life, for my marriage, for my finances, for my children. I pray for your perfect will. In your per for your perfect prophetic counsel for my life, for your name's sake, don't let me mess up. For your name's sake, don't let me fall into the trap of my enemies. For your name's sake, don't let me make any decisions and choices that will cause me to fall into the trap of my enemies. If you pray this prayer, if there is any danger, if there is any calamity, peril, mischief coming your way, the Lord will deliver you for his name's sake. Anyone praying this prayer, if you are about to make any wrong turn or make any evil decision that will cause you great pain and cause you to fall into the trap of your enemies, for the name's sake, for Jesus' name's sake, he will deliver you. So pray, Father, for your name's sake, let your perfect will be done in my life. For your name's sake, for your purpose's sake. In Kaparabababababa. Kendele kata yadaba, ronta le kata yadaba, renka pa 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 pa, re pa pa ra pa pa ra pa pa, re pa pa ra pa pa ra pa pa, re pa pa ra pa pa ra pa pa, zegede bus kata ta ta ta, re kata ta 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 ta. For your name's sake, O Lord, plant me in your perfect will, in your perfect purpose, in your perfect counsel for my life. For your name's sake. Let me escape every satanic traps and snare that has been set for me. Let me not be manipulated to do any wrong, evil, wrong choices and mistakes. For your name's sake, deliver me. In the name of Jesus. Then verse 4, Psalm 23 verse 4. Say, here though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Here though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, meaning that as I go through any trial or testing, I pray for your divine protection. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the fact that you're a Christian doesn't mean that you not go through some valleys of the shadows of death. You'll go through some problems. You'll go through some crisis. You'll go through some difficulties. It's a test. It is a test. It is a process. It is a test. But as you go through the testing, the Lord's presence will be with you and it shall be well with you. You will come out of that hostile environment at your workplace. You will come out of that attack in your marriage. You will come out, out, out of that sickness that they have diagnosed you with. You will come out of that unemployment crisis you are going through. Whatever test you are going through, the Lord will bring you out. The Lord will bring you out. He will take you through and he will bring you out. He will take you through. Not everybody who goes through a problem comes out. Some people are damaged. Some people are crushed. Some people are defeated. Some people are destroyed by their problem. But for you, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will see you through and bring you out. 
out. The Lord will see you through your testing, your trials, your tribulation, your attacks and bring you out. So begin to pray, Father, in my testing, in my trials, in my situation, Father, take me through and bring me out. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray that the Lord will see you through. Every trials, every tribulation, every challenges you are going through and the Lord will take you through and bring you out successfully. Begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, in every trial, I pray that Lord Almighty, you will bring me through. You will take me through. And in the name of Jesus, as the Lord takes you through it, he will also preserve you. He will also protect you. Pray that the Lord will preserve you through your time of trial. Pray that the Lord will protect and preserve you from your time of difficulties and challenges. The presence of God will preserve you. The presence of God will protect you. The Lord will be on your side and see you through. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. For the presence of God will encompass around you to preserve and protect you from all evil in the mighty name of Jesus. It says, I shall fear no evil because the Lord is our protection. I shall fear no evil. Why? Because the Lord is your protector and he'll protect you. For you are with me. Though I go through it, I fear no evil for thou art with me. Why? Because God is too faithful to abandon you. God is too faithful to reject, to forsake you. God is too faithful to leave you alone. His name is Emmanuel. There's somebody you are going through some tough times in your life right now. But behold, I want you to hear the word of God. The spirit of God is speaking to you expressly that God is still with you and God is on your side. He goes before you. He is on your side and he's walking behind you. He is going before you. He is on your side and is also behind you, following after you to make sure that all things work together for your good. So you can be sure that because of his faithfulness, his presence will see you through the crisis and you'll come out in the name of Jesus. And then the Bible says that your rod and staff, they comfort me. That is when God begins to what? Discipline us as believers. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In the presence of my enemies. God is giving you a hope that whatever situation that you are going through, you are going to come out on top. If your enemies think that your present situation is your final destination, if your enemies are expecting that you are not going to, it's not going to end well with you, then they are in for a surprise because whatever you are going through, God is yet about to set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. You are going to pray and ask the Lord, Father, no matter what I'm going through, let me come up on top. Set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Some people have already started laughing at you. Some people are already gossiping about you. Some people are already making fun of you. Some people are already slandering you and saying that, look at her. Aha, uh -huh, we said it. She has lost her job. Aha, uh -huh, you see, she can't She's losing her car. She's losing her house. You see, she's been laid off. What is she going to do? You see, her marriage is breaking. Some people are already laughing at you. But Lord, you are going to tell them, Father God, whatever I'm going through, turn it around and set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Set a table before me. Those conspirators, those who are planning evil against me at my workplace, those who are wishing my downfall, those who are wishing my demise, those who are wishing to, to for me to fail so that they can say that, yes, we told you, you can never do it. You can never achieve your dreams. You can never go back to school. It is too late for you. Father, set a table before me in the presence of my critics, in the presence of my haters, in the presence of those who wish me ill will. Oh Lord, set a table before me. Lift up your voice and pray this prophet prayer. Oh God Almighty, there are those who are planning evil, scheming evil, devising evil, plotting evil against me. But Lord, I cry out to you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Set a table before me, oh God, in the very presence of my enemies. Set a table before me right now in the presence of my enemies. Exalt my horn like that of the unicorn. Put my enemies to shame. Exalt me. Elevate me. Promote me. Oh God, let me up, oh Lord. Do something that will put my enemies to shame. Father, in the name of Jesus, set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Somebody, God is doing something for you in Jesus' name. Then he comes back to say, you anoint my head with oil. That's it. Uh, when God anoints a person, he consecrates the person. He set the person up aside. He consecrates and sets you apart. And that's why he says, touch not my anointed. Touch not. There are people who when God anoints them and consecrate them, you dare not touch them. You dare not do them harm. You, do, you dare not even plan evil against them because the Lord has consecrated them, has set them apart for his, for his heavenly 
purpose and for his divine agenda. You are going to pray, Father, in this fasting and time, this time of fasting and prayer, Father, I pray for fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh anointing, fresh praise. Let your presence come upon me. Let your anointing come upon me. D so consecrate me and let me be disconnected from all if once the anointing comes upon you no witch no wizard no plans of your enemies can defeat you anymore so begin to pray father consecrate me by filling me up not with your holy ghost and with your power with your holy ghost and with your presence begin to pray for the presence of god the anointing of god to come afresh upon you to set you apart to be above every storm above every problem in the name of jesus Repapa di kata ya daba daba, repapa di kata ya daba daba, repapa di bibi senti. Divine consecration. May the Lord set you apart for good works. May the Lord set you apart for signs and wonders. May the Lord set you apart for miracles, for deliverance. May the Lord set you apart. May no evil come near you in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the Bible says. Touch not my anointed. As you receive fresh oil, doing this fasting and prayer, may the Lord cause no evil to come near your dwelling place. May the Lord preserve and protect you and your family from all calamities in Jesus' name. Then he begins to pray. My cup ran it over. Oh, somebody, you are experiencing scarcity right now. You may be unemployed right now. You may be struggling right now. But in the next three days, the Lord is going to create a supernatural overflow. He says that my cup ran it over. There's going to be overflow. There's going to be what? Overflow. I'm prophesying overflow. Out of lack will come abundance. Out of scarcity will come overflow. I'm prophesying an overflow. The Lord is going to cause abundance to happen in your life miraculously. Out of scarcity, there is going to be abundance. Somebody out of joblessness, three jobs are going to be open to you to make choices. Out of being so single, Three men will show up and you have to make a decision and pray for God. Which one do I pick? All of them are Christians. All of them love the Lord. All of them, Lord, all of them look right. Which one? The Lord is going to bring overflow. Whatever is lacking in your life, God is releasing into your life right now, dropping into your spirit right now, an overflow. I see double doors open, double opportunities open, favors opening to you, gates opening to you. God releasing an overflow of blessing. Begin to tap into the overflow. Say, Father, let there be an overflow. Let there be an overflow. Every area of my life where there was lack, let there be an overflow. Your husband is going to give you an overflow love and affection out of confusion in your marriage there's going to be an overflow of divine love out of overflow of what every pain you are going to express an overflow of health hey kapandele kataya i prophesy overflow let there be let there be an overflow let there be a supernatural abundance rakata kata rikata kata rikata kata my cup ran it over 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 i prophesy that your cup will begin to run over. I prophesy that your cup shall begin to run over. I prophesy your cup will begin to run over. Let there be abundance in the midst of scarcity. I prophesy abundance in the midst of scarcity. I prophesy abundance in the midst of pain. I prophesy health in the midst of bitterness. I prophesy sweetness in the midst of joblessness. I prophesy jobs, opportunities in the midst of failure. I prophesy success, victory, a katarakata in the midst of divorce i prophesy restoration love and harmony let my cup run it over let your cup run it over with joy with peace with deliverance with restoration with the presence of god my cup run it over my cup is running over the lord is going to supply financial blessing to you job offers opportunities Doors opening. Rakata kata. Divine helpers are coming. Divine helpers are coming. Help is on the way. Your cup is running. Your cup is running. Out of lack. Out of scarcity. There shall be abundance. Supernatural abundance. Rapapa. Strength. Healing. Health. Peace. Overflow. Of the presence and the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. Mantadaba verses surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. After this prayer, you will declare, Surely, goodness and mercy are following me. Goodness and mercy are following me. I want you to pray prophetic prayer that in the name of Jesus, in the next three days, let goodness, the angel of goodness, and the angel of mercy follow me into my blessing. In the next three days, let the angel of goodness and the angel of mercy help me to get that job. In the next three days, let the angel of goodness and mercy help me to receive that money. In the next three days, let 
the angel of goodness and mercy cause me to receive back my job. In the next three days, let the angel of goodness and mercy cause me to get my marital restoration. In the next three days, let the angel of goodness and mercy cause me to receive my total deliverance. Let goodness and mercy follow me. Begin to pray that prayer. Prophesy. Activate and release those angels to come and minister goodness and mercy to you. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. The blessing of the goodness and mercies of God. The blessing of the goodness and mercies of God. The blessing of the goodness and mercies of God. The blessing of goodness and mercies of God. Let the goodness of God visit your marriage. Let the goodness of God visit your child. Let the goodness of God visit your son. Visit your daughter. Visit your husband. Visit your wife. Visit your career. Visit your education. Let the goodness of God visit your life. In the next three days, let the angel of goodness and mercy usher you into your miracle. Usher you into your deliverance. Usher you into your breakthrough. Let the angel of goodness and mercy usher you into your divine blessing. Receive it in the next three days. Let there be a testimony. Let there be a testimony. In the next 72 hours, let goodness and mercy follow you. In the name of Jesus. And it says, all the days of my life, all the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Meaning, my covenant is with God is secured. My relationship with God is secured. I will dwell. Father, help me to dwell in your presence no forever and ever. Lord, I give over my body, soul, and spirit to you. I give over my life to you forever and ever. I'll serve you as Lord, as King over my life. I'll never depart from your presence. As you bless me, as you prosper me, as you do me good, Father, I will never depart from your presence. In the name of Jesus, let goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life, let me experience your goodness and I will dwell. Father, help me to dwell. Help me to be faithful. Help me to serve you with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind. Oh Lord, help me to dwell in your presence. Begin to pray that the Lord will give you the grace that you'll be a good Christian. You will live a holy life. You'll live a righteous life. You'll be prayerful. You'll read this word. You will hack into his voice. You will do the right things. You will do the right things. You will listen to his voice. Pray that you, you will constantly dwell in his presence and you will not allow anything to seduce you from the presence of God. Begin to pray. Father, cause me to dwell in your presence all the days of my life. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Let me dwell in your presence all the days of my life. Let me dwell, oh God. Yes, let me dwell. Father, help me to dwell in your presence. Yes, all the days of my life. Let me dwell, Lord Jesus. Let me dwell. Let me dwell. You shall dwell. The Bible says, you or she who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. Lord, it's my desire that I will dwell forever and ever in your presence. Teach me your ways. Help me, O God, to serve you with all my heart, soul, and mind. Lead us in the path of righteousness. Help us, O Lord, to die to the world, to die to self, to die to carnality, and to pick up the cross to follow you. Help us to be rapture ready. Help us to be ready for the soon return of Jesus. Help us to be heavily bound. Help us, O Lord, to be saints who are holy, consecrated, and acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. If you pray this prayer, believe it, and it's going to do you good in Jesus' name. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside his still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. May this prophetic prayers be your portion and manifest in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody, believe God and you shall see his glory in the next three days. In the next three days, you shall see the glory. Tomorrow, our scripture reading is Ruth chapter 4. Ruth chapter 4 is our scripture reading for tomorrow. 
their fasting continues from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. The fasting is from 6 a.m. in the morning to 6 p.m. in the evening. And during the fast, we drink water and we break at 6 p.m. We are ending the fast on the 23rd of November. We are ending the fast on the 23rd. So anytime you are listening to this broadcast, it's never too late to join and connect and get the blessing. Join us every day for prayers at 11 p.m. Eastern Time U.S., 4 a.m. London, 5 a.m. Europe, 1 p.m. for Australia, 8 p.m. for those of you in India. Connect and let's pray. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fresh Fire Prayer Line. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, KL Blessing, and the Facebook channel, KL Blessing. Doing this fast, we are using this book, Touch Not My Anointed. Touch Not My Anointed. Once the anointing of God touches your life or comes upon you, you become untouchable, indestructible. You begin to walk in the power and the glory of God. There are so many loaded prophetic prayers and deliverance prayers that will change your life as you read along and you fast. Get your copy or get it for somebody and it will be a big blessing to them in the name of Jesus Christ. You can get your copy on the website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com Go to our website www.freshfireprayer.com Click on the uh, store and you purchase it and start reading it and pray alongside as you fast and you shall see the outcome of what the Lord will do for you in Jesus' mighty name. Any donation to the ministry to support the ministry, any sacrifice, any seeds tapping into the word of God, you can do so through the website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com If it's cash up, it's Fresh Fire Prayer. All the other giving outlets are on the website www.freshfireprayer.com We thank God, we bless God, we exhort Him, we give Him all the glory for what He has done for us and continue to do for us. Expect a miracle. You can't pr pray, you can't pray this pray uh, prayer you can't pray this prayer and remain the same. If you only believe, you will see the glory of God. And that's why the Lord said, pray this prayer. And I was wondering, it is too simple. We've heard it again and again. But tonight you see the depth of this prayer. And if you have a revelation and you tap into this, you will see how what God will do for you. When the Lord becomes your shepherd, you will lack nothing. You will fear no evil. And you know. You will be on the top because the shepherd will see you through in Jesus name. May God bless you. God willing, we shall see tomorrow. We shall meet tomorrow. Be blessed. Bye.